She was an educator, a catalyst, an innovator. She had the ability to step up to almost any challenge or opportunity. She was a person who could hold 30 different projects together and still have time to go up to her farm in Maine for the weekend. She was not a person who was easily discouraged. She fought for her students. She held us to high standards. And she had a certain inner strength and inner confidence. She was also a wonderful human being. A great colleague and a great friend. Well, let's start with Margaret's undergraduate years here. She came in the middle 60s at a time when MIT was endeavoring to admit more young women. Margaret and I met as roommates at McCormick Hall at MIT. She served while she was a student as president of the Association of Women Students. And we explored all of the states in New England together. We drove all over the place. But the place that really caught her attention was Maine. After her undergraduate education here, she pursued a doctorate, and she spent some time in England. And she returned here in the late 1960s with an appointment as an instructor in physics. And so beginning in the summer of 1969, she began preparing the way for the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, as it came to be called. I started in Margaret's laboratory as a Europe student, and when I left her laboratory, I had my PhD. As I recall, that first fall, there were just 20 or 30 students who participated. There was a Europe office. She was it. Yeah, she prided herself on putting that program forward with relatively little money. Margaret really valued the people in the laboratory, and that was how she uh, focused her energies. It was going, the, the advances were going to be made by the people, not by the equipment. The only condition associated with involving a student in Europe is that a faculty member had to say, this work, if performed, is worthy of, of academic credit. That was it. There was this point when you realize this person is in their element. There's these big plumes of, you know, frost and cryogenic smoke sort of billowing through the laboratory. And, uh, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was she said, but uh, it was something like, isn't this cool, you know? <laughs> she worked on her own research activities. She had a number of graduate students who worked with her on those programs. She saw that they had not just the research skills that they needed, but the life skills that they needed. I remember going and parking in the vice president's spot, uh, you know, at the Carnegie Institution and proudly marching up to her office. Uh, there was just a whole level of exposure that you got if you worked for her that, uh, that uh, you just couldn't get any other way. It was Margaret who once told me that every student is an irreplaceable asset. In a very real sense, we were sort of an extended family. Within a decade, the program had grown to about 3,000 students. The Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program is such a great innovation in, in higher education, and it's one that we've emulated at Michigan. And of course, it has been emulated all over the country. I've had a number of students tell me that Europe was the reason they decided to come here. By the middle 80s, she was interested in having a role which gave her a broader sweep with respect to the undergraduate educational program. Uh, she had very deep thoughts about what a good education means. She made her imprint there by helping the faculty rethink the role of the humanities, arts, and social sciences at MIT. She loved commencements. The fact that MIT has every student recognized individually was something that was very important to her. She was engaged in those activities and was looking forward to activities that uh, would have gone beyond those kinds of efforts when she was taken ill in the fall of 1990. I'm extremely proud of the preparation that Margaret gave us. She was a teacher in every respect. She was a teacher of her students. She was a teacher of her colleagues, of institutions in a very important way. She packed a lot of life into 47 years, and uh, I think she would like to have gone on for about 100, which I always thought was about right. There's a piece of her uh, in every one of us, and it makes us stronger, more capable people. Mm -hmm.